Hi everyone, I'm Deirdre Breckenridge, CEO of Pure Performance Communications. Welcome to the NASDAQ PR Influencer Series. We're live at Market Site in Times Square, New York City, and I'm here with a special guest, Talia Beckett. She is the chairwoman and president of Women in PR USA. Hi, Talia. Thanks so much for joining me. Yes, thank you so much for having me, Deirdre. Well, you're here for a very special event this evening, the yes. launch of your organization. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about Women in PR USA. Yeah, so Women in PR, we, uh, we launched in Canada just a year ago. So we have Women in PR Canada, um, and Women in PR USA is a sister organization that we're just getting launched. And together, our organizations form the networking group Women in PR North America. Um, and the goal with our organization is we are giving women the opportunity to establish themselves as PR industry leaders, mm. establish their expertise in our field, um, and just share resources that they might not have at large organizations. Um, so uh, again, the purpose of our organization is to, to really talk about the lack of leadership opportunities for women in our field um, and the gender imbalance in our profession. And we're just trying to get our message out there and spread our advocacy work. Well, I want to stand up and say bravo. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. wonderful. Thank Why you. did you pick New York? Well, New York is the center of business in North America. So it just really felt like a natural fit. Like we wanted to say, we are here. We have arrived. Women in PR USA is in New York. Um, and there's so many large PR agencies in New York City as well. And I think our message to them is that we want to have women get a seat at the boardroom table. We want them to propel into those leadership positions. So we've been talking, I feel like we've been talking about women excelling in public relations, women excelling in, in any industry. And I'm, I'm just curious, as you were gearing up for this launch, or even as you were launching Women in PR in Canada, yeah. what kind of research were you uncovering that's sort of interesting about our industry or about women in the industry? Mm -hmm. Um, so we were, we've been working with a global sector group, Global Women in Public Relations, and we did a survey with them last year that actually identified a $15,000 U.S. Um, gender pay gap in the industry. Wait, how? how? $15,000. 15, yeah, so that's, oh that's quite significant when we actually went out and surveyed and asked women, how much are you making, and asked men how much they're making. And so we just want to have the conversation that, you know, you're in the exact same position. So you're a director of communications and you're making $15,000 less and you have the same amount of education and expertise. Um, we also identified that women have a real confidence issue when it comes to asking for a pay raise. Uh, so I think that kind of all fits in with that. Um, with That's that really interesting. Yeah. So uh, you, you noted the director of communications, the, the difference, yeah. the gender breakdown. Tilly, do you know if that's uh, across the board in, when you start out in public relations, whether you're a male or a female, there's a difference all the way up to like a, a C-suite level? Uh, we actually, we don't have stats on that yet, but I think that's really interesting. We're going to be doing another survey next year with Global Women in PR, so I think that's worth mentioning to them to see how that kind of translates upwards into leadership roles. Yeah, and you also mentioned um, women not being able to ask for what they're worth. Yeah. That's very interesting too. Do you have any thoughts around that? Is that just, you know, sometimes I wonder, is that the way that you grow up and you yeah don't maybe know how to negotiate that way or it's not something you necessarily learn in skill in school what do you think about that yeah I think that women just really have a hard time because they don't want to be seen as bossy in the <laughs> workplace we're grown up we're told not to be bossy that B word <laughs> uh, yeah but I say be bossy have those leadership skills right, right? You're, you're growing up we should encourage that in women to to speak out um, and ask for their worth and know their worth Right, so is that, I mean, I guess that's a good point to say, how can women stand out and be recognized? What, what, what should we all be doing? I think it's really important to give yourself that edge in the workplace. So think of something that really makes you unique, um, goes back to your personal brand, know your story. Uh, we're in PR, so you, you, know, you do it for your client all the time. You say, what's, what's their unique angle? So I think you need to know that for yourself, especially when you're going into an interview situation. Go into that interview um, 
and be able to be prepared to talk about what makes you unique. That's a really good point. I always say to my students that if you can prepare yep. ev for every meeting as if it was your interview or your first meeting, can you imagine how well you would do yeah. in every single meeting? That's very, yeah, that's a great way to put it too. <laughs> I like that, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. So how, how is your organization going to help women stand out, help them to advance professionally? Well. As I mentioned at the beginning, what we're kind of doing is we're, we're starting to share resources with women, especially women that have their own PR consultancies. There's definitely a trend of women um, starting their own businesses to manage career and family obligations. And they're not getting access to those same resources as they might get at a large organization. So through forming our organization, Women in PR USA, we want to bring together those resources and share ideas, share contacts, um, and just really, again, build women up and help them establish their expertise. Um, and we want to start a mentorship program as well. I think, um, you know, next year, if we could get a mentorship program together, that's one of the most important things you can do in, for your career. Uh, and when I was progressing through my own career, I always wished that I had that opportunity. Um, and I, I never did. To be did. a mentor or no, to have a to mentor? both. I never, I didn't have anyone mentor me in my career. And it, it was a long time and a long road to, to figure it out um, and kind of just keep moving in the right direction, one foot in front of the other, kind of keep going. But uh, I think if we can help women and show them uh, that as professional women that are successful, that this is the path that you need to take to get your career and to get to that C-suite level and to leadership roles. Uh, mentorship, I, th I think, is just so important. Oh, I think it's so important. It, it's also, it's interesting because before, years ago, you, I, I know I did, I would seek out a mentor or you work in a company and you automatically have a mentor. Okay. Today, it's a little bit easier because you can just go out and be on Twitter yeah. and follow yeah. a, a hashtag, you know, if it's a PR community, mm -hmm. and be learning or be yeah. in a Facebook group. So there are, it's not that close relationship, but there are definitely ways that you can be mentored. And I also love the reverse mentoring <laughs> that goes yes. on as yes. well. Yes, that's a good point, especially with all the new technology. You often find a lot of um, senior leaders going to the younger generation <laughs> saying, can you, can you help me uh, figure this out? How do I, how do I tweet? <laughs> right. Right. So, you know, hey, ask that question and, and yeah. definitely learn. Speaking of the, the younger generation, so when they're coming out of school or mm -hmm. even younger professionals, what do you think that they should be um, keeping their eyes on skills wise, competencies? And do you think it's easier now for them to get into PR? I actually don't think it's easier. I, I think some yeah. people do think it's easier, but I, um, PR is kind of getting a, a bit of a reputation that it's all glitz and glam. And that's something we really want to, to kind of go back to the, to the table and say, no, PR is very strategic. You need to know your stuff. You need to know how to work with media. Um, and in terms of what they need to kind of focus on, the younger generation, I would say communication skills are still the number one priority especially with social media and everyone kind of cutting the conversation very short um, down to, uh, what is Twitter, 140 characters? Yeah. Or did they give us more characters now? I don't know. There was a no, I mean, <laughs> conversation around that. I am still doing 140, that. but I always yeah. say to my students, it's really 115 so people can retweet you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think, again, with communication skills, um, it goes back to writing and kind of portraying what your message is to the media. Um, a lot of people say press releases are dead, which I completely disagree with. I disagree. I think that you need to have a well thought out press release and that is kind of your tool in your, in your toolbox that you're going to give to the media so they have all those facts and the information that goes behind it. So, Absolutely. Right? So it's not just online influencers and, and social media. Very strategic and I think younger women need to really get on board and understand that. Yeah, I think there's all different ways that younger professionals, all professionals need to learn how to write for public relations because there are so many different channels mm -hmm. and to understand, you know, the certain way that your writing is reaching an audience through one channel versus 
what your tweet looks like versus your Facebook post or your LinkedIn post or even the messages you're getting across in streaming mm -hmm. video. So it, it is, it's very important. But I think that, um, you know, on the younger professional side, it's easy in one aspect because you have so many mentors available and so many yeah. ways to learn, yeah. but it is harder because there's more demands yes. and definitely challenges. And I, I want to pivot a little bit to get to the trends. Okay. So, you know, your, your organization is a, a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. What are you looking at in terms of trends that are going to help your organization to get the word out there or, or, or how you're going to be shaping your activities? Yeah. Um, before I talk about our organization and shaping activities, I want to talk about a specific trend that I think, again, we really need to focus on. Um, and that's fact checking. Oh, <laughs> I think that, I'm with, so everything, you said that. Yeah, with everything happening in the media right now, um, I think uh, the role of PR is more important than ever. And media are really asking for those facts. So I think we're really going to see that as a trend going forward. Um, you know, not to mention trends with working with online influencers in video, but I think, again, just going back to having those facts to back up your message. Um, and in terms of our organization with, with trends, um, you know, we're, we're trying to document those. That's a big part of what we're doing through our research as a, a nonprofit organization. Um, so we're just getting started, so we don't have a ton of research behind us at this point, but that's a big goal for, for what we're going to be doing. No, it's so true, and I love that you said fact-checking. There's a lot of things that, from traditional PR, that no matter what yeah. channels, no matter the technology, no matter how consumers, the way they prefer their news and information, mm -hmm. we always have to carry the best of public relations forward, whether it's our fact-checking, our ethics, the, the, the measurement to prove value and improve communications. So maybe you could give um, a little advice to women in, in PR. What do you want to tell yes. them? I would like to tell them, especially you know, all women, no matter what age you are, young or senior in your career, I think that the most important thing that you can do is establish meaningful connections. So you're going to a networking event, don't just run around the room handing out your cards aimlessly. Really try to focus on building those meaningful connections, both with people in the PR industry, members of the media. Um, and again, that's what Women in PR is providing. We're providing that platform for women to build those meaningful connections. Um, so we hope they'll take advantage of that opportunity. Yeah, I mean, it, it is always that quality over quantity. We talk a lot about even with our media connections that you would much rather target and get mm. to know your journalists and your influencers, but yes. it's no different in anything that you do, even in the situation where you're, you're meeting your peers and you're getting to know them or yes. whoever it is. It is so important. Yeah. Well, uh, any events that are, are coming up for your organization or anything that you're, you want to share that's interesting? Yeah, so uh, one thing I'd love to share is that we just launched a job board for our organization. Oh. Uh, so we're going to be announcing that at our event tonight as well. But if, um, if you're looking for a job in PR, we are reaching out to organizations to ask them to, to promote what they're looking for in the workplace and women have an opportunity to create an online profile as well as job seekers or PR consultants. Um, so the website is jobs.womeninpr.com um, and it's just getting started but we, we're really trying to also promote the idea of job sharing. So when women take um, you know, an off ramp in their careers, um, maybe to care for elderly, elderly family members or they go on maternity leave, they're looking to re-enter the workforce, but we, it's really difficult for them to, to get back into that full-time role. So the idea of job sharing is that you could work with another woman on a full-time role, and you're going to work together on that responsibility. And I think that if employers would get behind that, we would see a lot more women that would stay in the workforce um, and be able to have that flexibility to manage their, their lifestyle decisions, which includes caring for young children or, or family members, as I've mentioned. That's right, because you, yeah. you have certain priorities. I think that's yeah. wonderful. 
yes, that you're doing that. Is that now just a, a test for your New York chapter? Or is that something that you're actually no, doing in, in that's Canada that as we're well? Doing. So it, the job board is for across North America. Mm -hmm. So not New York specific. It's um, you know jobs that are online and offline. And again, we're a women's organization, so we're looking for unique angles of what women need for their careers. That's wonderful. Well, <laughs> so, yeah, so I'm, good luck with everything. I'm yes. sure the organization will be incredibly successful. Where can people find out more about you, women in PR, and especially if they want to get involved? Yeah, we would, we would love for everyone to join us as a member. We're, um, our organization, you can, when you join as a member online, womeninpr.com is the website. Um, and we're also launching a members academy. So women will have access, women and men, sorry, <laughs> men can join us too. That would be yes. great if you would get on board and be champions of women in the workforce. Um, but members will have access to online courses, uh, replays of our events. So say there's uh, women in LA and they, they couldn't make it out to this New York City event we're having this evening. So they'll be able to watch the event live um, in our members site. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for coming in and chatting. Thank you. It was really very interesting. Yes. And I want to thank all of you for tuning in to NASDAQ's PR Influencer Series. I'm Deirdre Breckenridge signing off for now, but stay tuned for more from NASDAQ.